Hello, baseball fans, and welcome. MLB The Show has action out of the AL Central. It's the Chicago White Sox going up against the Kansas City Royals. Along with my partner, Chris now, Singleton, I'm John Chomby. Singy, it might be a launch angle home run heavy sport these days, but we've got one of the very best bat-to-ball contact hitters feature right here today. I love the fact that he never gets too big with his swing and flies open, tries to launch the ball. He stays very compact. He's looking at getting the barrel to the baseball, doesn't care which part of the ballpark that he hits it to. And I don't care if it's a lefty or a righty out there on the mound. He looks extremely comfortable from either side. About to get started here. And on the hill in this one, Brady Singer. What do you look for here? Yeah, ZRA last year was a little worse than average, so definitely be looking for better results this season. You know, one of the keys is just being able to have a consistent delivery and to be able to repeat that delivery so you can hit the spots that you want to hit and have a higher chance of being successful. So just about set. Here's Tim Anderson. The wind of the pitch. That one fouled off. Hit in the air, right field. Lopez sizes this one up, squeezes it, and there's one down. Time to check out the lineup for the White Sox. It features a great veteran presence, Frank Thomas. Now, this is a player that's, you know, hit over 300 for his career in terms of batting average. And being able to do that, that is extremely good bat-to-ball skills that he's had for a long time. He's just got a real consistent approach, uses all fields, and he's got a game plan when he comes to the plate. So let's just keep our eyes on him. I think it's pretty hard to take your eyes off of him. The wind of the pitch. Bounce to the right. And he handles it himself for the out. Batting third, the first baseman, number 35, Frank Thomas. So up next, Frank Thomas. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. Next one off the plate inside. And that's ball two. The wide to kick the pitch. Strike two. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris. And it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup. And I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. And the pitch. That one drifts inside. Cracks his bat and pops him up. Sends it to first, and the White Sox go quietly. We're midway in inning number one, and now the Royals will get their first shot in a scoreless ball game. We go to the bottom of the first, and on the hill in this one, Johnny Cueto. Lots of punch outs, a real strikeout artist singing been a very solid pitcher throughout his career era around three and a half what i like is he competes he stays in the game and he gives his team an opportunity to win bottom of the first here's the veteran outfielder johnny damon feels like it's less common today that you see a guy like this the speed component the contact component but lack of power Lace down the line. This looks like extra bases. And that's going to get into the corner. Into second easily with a leadoff double. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field. And it doesn't always translate into the game. But right there it did. And he did it perfectly. Andrew Benintendi steps up. Next pitch is outside. He just has to understand that his skill set is unique and he's very valuable for any ball club. If he does that, he'll play a long time in this league. Ah. 
And now a full count. Runner leads away at second. Out towards right center field. Baines under it. And there's one away. And here now, the lineup for the Royals. This group was shut out their last game, so we're going to see if they can bounce back with a better effort here today. And, Boog, it can get in your head a little bit when you get shut out. You're frustrated. You're seeing that consecutive streak of innings you haven't scored, and you want to get off to a great start, score early, because if you don't, you feel like you could linger into two consecutive games. Rudder takes off. Pitch in for a strike. Throw to third, and he's in there easily. I think he surprised everyone in the ballpark, and especially the pitcher. It wasn't a great lead there, but when he took off, I think he caught him off guard. Nice job to get to third. Left-hand batter waits. Line drive, caught! Batting four, the catcher, Salvador Perez. And now it's Salvador Perez to the plate. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. No score yet, but a runner at third with two away. Nope, Next pitch misses, two and one. No, the best way to shake off yesterday's struggles is to get on the board early. They've got a guy in scoring position. They've got to find a way here to get him in. Two and one now. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Anderson to first. That's the inning. Second inning coming up here in Kansas City. No score. Top of the second, and now Luis Aparicio. Well, in their win last game, this guy came up with two home runs, obviously trying to keep the roll going here in this one. The pitch. Swing and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Tell you what, those are the types of guys pitchers really like to punch out when they're on the mound because if they get on, just the distraction that they create with all that speed over on the base pass, it could take away your focus from the next hitter, and that's the last thing you want to do is serve up a pitch that a guy hits over the fence, and it's a multi-run home run. Makes the grab, and there's two gone. That is it. The second baseman. Ray. And up next for Chicago, Ray Durham. A defensive swing right there. Some cheese on the inside part of the plate. But the hands are still stinging after that one. Oh. The next offering misses. And the count's even at two. And down on strikes. And that will end the inning. One, two, three, go the White Sox. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Back here at Kauffman Stadium, here's Hunter Dozier to the dish. And a count one and two. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Gary Simmons has the plate duty in this one. 
Well, with Simmons, it's not always your standard strike zone, Boog. It kind of gives a little extra in some parts of the zone and then can be tighter in others. But I think the important thing is he doesn't get labeled as inconsistent. So you got to stay ready up there. Line to right, and that'll be a base hit. Pretty good fastball location. Down and in on the corner, but that was just a nice job to handle it. Hit it hard. Very tough spot to get the barrel to most of the time, though. Now here's Bobby Witt, Jr., Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Maybe a little loss of focus on the mound right there. Pretty much gifted in first base with a quick free pass. And now it's the switch hitter, Carlos Santana. Second inning here, no score. And one and two. After the loss yesterday afternoon where they really didn't ever get things going on offense, I think this is an important opportunity right here to pick up an early run. Foul ball there. And a pitch. Good eye right there. Nothing, nothing here in the bottom of the second. Next offering is fouled back. The 2-2. Center field. Robert settles underneath it. Puts the squeeze on that one. Runner tags up for third. Into third now. So runners at the corners and one out. Batting it. The second baseman. Nicky. Lopez. Nicky Lopez up to the plate. Kicks and deals. Way out front for strike two. Big pitch right here. He's going to try to make a pitch. It's going to produce a strikeout or a ground ball double play. And he deals. Stays alive. Next offering is fouled back. No score here in the second. Got him. Two down. Well, that was such a great opportunity to grab the lead. You had the infield back. All you've got to do is just put the ball in play on the ground and you drive across a run. It's a frustrating outcome for the hitter. Now, I still have a chance, but it's probably going to take a clutch hit with two outs. Now the batter now, number 11. The 1-1 one -one is upstairs. Ball two. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. Lifted in the air, right field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that'll do it. Royals strand a pair. We'll move to the third with no score. Back here in Kansas City. Now the third baseman, Paul Canerco. That one hammered left field back there. 
And that one is out of here. His second of the year, and they grab the lead. It's 1-0. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. Luis Robert now. Squibbed out in front of the plate. Throw on to Santana. And they take care of Robert for the out. Good late life on that inside fastball. Ran in on the hands and got that weak contact. Little slow grounder to get the McGuire. out. And here's the catcher, Reese McGuire. Good power. Not great in the OBP department. Right-hander kicks, deals. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Damon makes the catch. And there are two down. The batter, number seven, shortstop, Tim Anderson. Back to the top of the White Sox lineup. And next to hit for the Sox, Tim Anderson. 0 for 1. He was robbed of a hit on a diving catch his first time up. Line to second. Snagged on the bounce. Lopez tosses the first. And they take care of Anderson for the out. And the inning is over. The White Sox with the homer to get things going. And the home team down a run. Set for the bottom of the third. And stepping in is the speedy Johnny Damon. Bouncer to the big hurt. Steps on first for the out. Now batting, the left fielder, Andrew Benintendi. Andrew Benintendi up to the plate. Hit it well, but flied out to the deepest part of the outfield his first time. And the righty deals. There's a strike. When you look at Benintendi, think about this. He played in the same conference as both Alex Bregman and Dansby Swanson. Those two guys picked ahead of him in the first round. But it was Benintendi who was the SEC Player of the Year the year they all got drafted. Yeah, and the organization clearly saw something special in this kid as a prospect, and it's paid off nicely. Here comes a pitch. Into center and a base hit. He went up there and got it. With two strikes, I'm not going to leave this in the umpire's hands. I'm going to be aggressive. It was in a location where you could get those arms extended that he loves to do. So nice job right there coming back in that at bat. One down. And next up for the Royals, George Brett. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. Next offering misses. And yeah, that's ball two. Now, when you think about players in the past or even in today's game, who's a comparison? He reminds me a little bit of Harold Baines. Both of them lefties, both outfielders, and he's shown similar types of production at the plate. And that one fouled off. On the ground, right side. Sneaks through, base hit. They fired in quickly, so it's first and second with only one away. Now Salvador Perez steps in for the Royals. Ground ball left side could be two. Tags the runner for one, and that's two. On to inning number four. It's the White Sox one and the Royals nothing. Back here at the ballpark, now the left fielder, Minnie Minoso. Singing, he's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. 
How difficult is that to do? Oh, just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Next offering finds the zone, and the count is full. The pitch. Swang and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. Off to a good start with a leadoff dot. Man, those are the types of hits where you don't feel any vibration in your hands whatsoever. Such a good feeling. Absolutely punished that pitch. Wasn't fooled in the slightest. 109 off the bat. I think that means you put a pretty good swing on it. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Frank Thomas steps to the plate for the White Sox. He's got the power, but great contact skills. One of the best contact hitters in the game. Can't get there. Base hit. Lopez relay to second, but he's in there easily. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like he did right there. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Luis Aparicio. His first at bat was a strikeout. That one misses. Two and two. Oh, he's so good about trying to drive the ball to the opposite field gap in these situations. If he takes that approach, he could bust this game wide open. And a swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. I mean, with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate, so very difficult to get the barrel on it. Oh, that got him on the mound. And they can't make the play. A run comes in to score. And now we'll see if he's okay on the mound. Picks himself up in RBI. Kind of a risky pitch coming inside with the breaking ball like that. You have to bury it. Otherwise, it's not too difficult to get the bat to it like he did that time. Ray Durham steps to the plate for the White Sox. Caught looking his first time up. Gonna count one and two. Thomas on third. Baines over at first, so going away. And now the count is even. The pitch. And that one sliced foul. That fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. And a pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Runners are at the corners. One away. Swing and a ball popped up, and that should be extra bases. Runner in from third to extend their lead. It's three zip, and in its second with an RBI double. Well done, drives in the run. When you pop a ball up like that, you don't expect it to get you a knock too often, but right there, somehow he got it to drop in behind first base, and that's where no one could get to it. Second and third, one gone. Here's a big power threat. Paul Canerco. Calling for the intentional walk, and that loads up the bases. And the force play is now in order. And now it's Luis Robert. Luis. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. 
Luke, in situations like these, the air can get really thin up there at the plate. Got to find a way to breathe and slow everything down. That one in for a strike, two and two. Movement in the bullpen. Taylor Clark up and getting ready for Mike Matheny. Lynch getting cranked up as well. And here it comes. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two away. Well, that event seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three-pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at bat. Here's Reese McGuire. And that one fouled off. The next pitch misses two and two. Out to short. They take the force out. That ends the inning and stops things from getting out of hand. On now to the bottom of the fourth. It's the White Sox three and the Royals nothing. And welcome back. Ready to go. Bottom four. Now it's the right fielder, Hunter Dozier. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Next pitch is outside. Ball three. Now in this three ball count, down in the ball game, you've got to be very selective. Take your walk if they'll give it to you. They all pitch. That one misses. So a leadoff walk. That's a nice at bat and a great take on 3 2. Probably could have gone either way in that spot around the knees. Bobby Witt Jr. steps in for the Royals. Worked a walk in his first trip to the plate. And a pitch. Little trouble with this one behind the plate. He's in there. At the belt and fires. Swing and a ball popped up. Thomas under it. Puts it away for the out. Up next for the Royals, the first baseman, Carlos Santana. And now, Carlos Santana. One and two now. And there's a foul ball. Dozier, the runner at second with one away. Lifted in the air, right center field. Robert, raging back towards the wall. Racing, makes the catch. Tags up from second, and he'll head to third. Every day during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 now minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. So digging in, Nicky Lopez. Struck out looking at his first at bat. Two outs with a runner at third. Right-hander deals. This one in the dirt. Runner holds tight. 
as the count moves to two and two. That one the other way. Base hit and a run in to score. Well, that gets him a little closer in this one. That was a pretty good pitch. Breaking ball down and in, but when it's breaking in towards you, you have a lot of time to see it and just try to get on plane with it. He hit that one pretty well. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. Number 11 steps in for the Royals. The pitch. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Here comes a three two. Swings and lines a base hit into left field. Throw in holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two away. That's back-to-back -back singles for him. Just a cookie down the middle. I mean, those are the ones you dream about. Ones in the cage, you're just hoping you get in the ball game. Right down the middle, not a whole lot of velocity. Right on top of it. Johnny Damon steps in for the Royals. That smash towards center. Dives, and he can't hang on. And he's safe at third as a run scores on the play. Well, here we are, third time through the order, and this is where we see the OPS jump up. Manager might have to go to the bullpen a little bit sooner than he anticipated. Benatendi up here. The 1-1. One -one. This one lifted in the air, left field. He gets there to make the play. A nice running grab. And that is the third out of the inning. On to the top of the fifth we go. It's the White Sox three and the Royals two. Welcome back. Top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Tim Anderson. The wind of the pitch. And a swing and a line drive at a right field. And a base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. And now, Minnie Minoso. Righty delivers. That's in there. Here's a one two soft contact in the air that one gets down for a hit lead runner to second so two on and nobody out down in the count battling to stay alive and just a nice job to put it in play with the way defenders track down balls these days I mean both from the infield and in the outfield there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that but there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a lawn dart in there and he found a way and now here is Frank Thomas. This one popped up. Foul ground first base side. Makes the grab one away. Now and the Royals manager making his way towards the mound now as he will make the move. Brady Singer won't go any further and he leaves in a one run game. New pitcher coming on. We'll be back in a minute.
Taylor Clark comes on now, and he'll do his best to keep this close. Well, at this point of the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and the little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. And now the DH, Luis Aparicio, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. The pitch. And strike two. One ball, two strikes, you down. Righty to the plate. Luis Aparicio was a trendsetter in one major way. He was the first Venezuelan player inducted into the Hall of Fame. Kicks and fires. High fly ball down the left field line. And that is a foul ball. Anderson, the lead runner at second. Minoso at first, one gone. Slow roller to third. Brett. Off balance feed. There's one. Over to first. Safe. Well, an aggressive slide right there at second base, but that's a legal slide. I like that because you're trying to do whatever you can to break up the double play. And it looked like it had an effect on that throw just a little bit. Couldn't get enough on it to get the second out at first for that double play. Nice job by the base runner. Harold Baines, the next to hit. Next offering is foul back. The one two. In the air out towards right center. Damon glides to his left. Makes the grab and that's the inner. White Sox strand a couple and it remains a 3-2 ball game. here at Kauffman Stadium we head to the bottom of the fifth and to the play for Kansas City George Brett the wind and the pitch up and in and he gets out of the way I remember when all the eyes in baseball were on Brett as he chased the magic 400 mark in 1980 didn't miss by much finished at 390 on the ground to third Throw over to Thomas. Brett out on the play. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. The season Brett had in 80 was out of this world. Led the league in average, slugging, and OPS. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss, and now two and two. And Brett was at the 400 mark with only a couple of weeks left in the 80 season. It looked like he was going to do it. The why to kick the pitch. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Now two out. So up now for Kansas City, Hunter Dozier. Hunter Dozier. 1-1 one, one now. Up the middle, Anderson handles the chance. The throw to first, and that is the inning. KC down in order. They're down 3-2. here at the ballpark top six now it's the second baseman Ray Durham and the pitch stays alive and a swing and a miss 
And there's one down. I'm not sure that was the exact location the pitcher wanted, but it worked. He got the swing and miss, and I'm sure a bit of sigh of relief after seeing that one go through the zone. So up next for Chicago, Paul Canerco. He blasted one out earlier in the third. Just a solo home run, but an important swing of the bat in this game. We've already seen him do it once. Can he do it again? Here's a 1-1. Up the middle. Throw on to Santana. Two quick outs to open the top of the sixth. Now batting the center fielder, Luis Roberts. And here is Luis Robert. Next one misses. Two balls and a strike. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. Next pitch is outside. And he deals. That one's in there. Counts full three and two. Two down, nobody on. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and miss, and you walk off the field. New pitcher on now, Kendall Graveman. This is his third time out this year. Number 49, Kendall Graveman. Back here in Kansas City, leading off Bobby Witt Jr. Three, two. Swing and a high fly ball. Pretty well struck right field. That's back there. Drops in for a hit. Couldn't run it down. Not stopping. He's going for three. Now a relay to third. In there safely. Always feels amazing getting a job done when the team needs you to come through. It's just bigger than your own individual stats. Came screaming off the bat, I'm sure. Exit velocity is off the charts. No doubt he squared that baseball up perfectly. So there was no fluke to that triple by any means. Now we'll see if they can pick up that tie and run and start us over here in the late innings. Next to switch hitting first baseman, Carlos Santana. Kicks and deals. Just missed. Wit at third with nobody out. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Two, two down. And just misses with that one. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Left hand batter waits. And that's ball four. Pretty much the last thing you want from your bullpen arms are free passes, especially in spots like this. Make the team earn their way off. So runners at the corners, nobody out. Here's the second baseman, Nicky Lopez. And he's already singled in this game. And a pitch. And they're all loaded up. Well, the stage has been set for this offense, Boo. It's all about creating opportunities, and this is one of them right here. And next up for the Royals, number 11. 
these home fans they are making a lot of noise putting pressure on that pitcher out there yeah the righty deals got him huge strike out there the pitchers have become so much better at commanding that high fastball it used to be that a lot of guys didn't like to throw it because it threw off their release point and their mechanics and they're aimed at keeping everything at the knees get ground balls but because hitters get a swing path that can lift balls at the knees up in the air and over the fence this pitch has come back into play and they are doing some special things with it now it's going to be Johnny Damon One out, base is full. In for a strike, now it's three and two. comes the run from third it's 3-3 three, three. well that at bat had a lot of pressure riding on it so really great job coming through right there it's got to feel good he clearly didn't catch that one on the big part of the bat just kind of muscled it out there and you know on the mound it can be pretty frustrating for a guy but you just kind of have to expect those to drop in there sometimes now a huge at bat in this game coming up Ben Intendi to the plate Next pitch is downstairs. Rip to third and caught. And that'll put runners at the corners with two away. Yeah, that was a wasted RBI opportunity, but a competitor like him, he is looking forward to making up for it in his next at-bat. George Brett steps in for the Royals. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. Two outs, bases are full. The next offering misses. And it's two and one. Two walks in the inning already, and he just doesn't seem comfortable out there. Like he can find the right mechanics and then repeat them. The two one. That one out to right. Makes the grab, and that is that. But they pick up one run on the RBI single. We're tied now with three apiece. Joel Pyamps will take over here. He's making his second appearance of the season. Joel And welcome back. And now the catcher comes up to him. Reese McGuire. The wine of the pitch. Now front pulls that one foul. Now it's three and two. Right-handed reliever. Got him. One gone here. Frustrating end to the at-bat for the hitter, and I'm sure that's going to sit on him for a little while. You want to be ready to hit the fastball. Sometimes you can overthink things, and I think that was the case right there. So the batting order turns over. And up next for Chicago, Tim Anderson. Gets under it and pops it up. Pulls it in on the run. And there's two down. Now batting, left fielder, Mini Minoso. Here's the left fielder, Mini Minoso.
Right hander kicks deals. Just Whoa. missed. Three one now. And that clips the inside corner. One way to make a guy real uncomfortable at the plate is pound him inside with good velocity. They're doing that right here. So now three and two. Dozier gliding back. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that's the third out. Nothing doing for the White Sox. Score remains tied at three. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Joe Kelly. Number 17. Joe Kelly. Salvador Perez steps in for the Royals. He's a big, strong guy. Can untie this game with one swing. Next offering is in for a strike. And a foul ball, he stays alive. The pitch. That's ball two. I got to count two and two. Swing and a miss, and he chases that one in the dirt. In time to get him, one away in the strikeout. Now batting, right fielder, Hunter Dozier. Hunter Dozier getting ready to hit. The pitch. Fought off foul. The one two. Action in the pen down there. Aaron Bummer up and throwing. And now two and two stays alive. And a pitch. He swings and fouls one off. pitch in the air fairly deep to right field Baines makes the catch and that quickly two away now back the designated hitter Bobby Witt so here's the Royals DH Bobby Witt Jr. really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field 2-2 two, two down. Swings and misses. Royals set down in order. Royals go down 1-2-3. So no change in the score. It's 3-3. Three, three. Welcome back. And a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Amir Garrett. Number 24, Amir Garrett. Welcome back. We go to the eighth, and here's the first baseman, Frank Thomas. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes.
And now the lefty. Now you get to this part of the order. Yeah, there's some pop there, but more likely there are some base hits. So very important to be patient. Let the pitcher walk you, if he will. At the belt and fires. Just missed. This is a really good feeling for a hitter. At this point in the ball game, you know that they don't want to walk you, so you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. And here it comes. Not the best swing that time from the first round pick. Payoff pitch. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Is there a little wrinkle to that? I think there was. Yeah. A little slider action. Line drive to short and caught. Now here's the cleanup hitter for the White Sox. Luis Aparicio. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. The 1 1. Right side. And he pulls up on it, and that's a hit. Now batting, right fielder, Harold Baines. Harold Baines steps to the plate for the White Sox. 3-2 now. In the air, left side. He's got it, and there's two away. And next to hit for the Sox, Ray Durham. Well, with pretty good speed over there at first base, I think the pitcher's got to slow everything down. Hold the ball a little bit, step off, just try to break the rhythm and timing of a potential base dealer. Garrett, keeping him close. Another move to first, and they're keeping him close. Two gone, the possible go-ahead run at first. Two one pitches in there, and the count is even. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. Next one just misses. Three and two down. Throw to first. Back standing. He's in there safely. Three, two now. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Aparicio leads off first with two down to the inning. And there's ball four. Well, that could be a big walk in this ball game. Moves the go-ahead run into scoring position. So some pressure pitches coming up in this next A-B. So up next for Chicago, Paul Canerco. I mean, these guys know they have to get going out of the gates, but you're not going to hear a skipper. You're not going to hear people really say that. Lefty ready and a 1-1. One -one. 
And a foul ball. Line drive, speared at first. Tosses to the pitcher covering the bag. Third out, and that ends the frame. White Sox strand a couple, still tied, three and three. Back here at Kauffman Stadium, and now the first baseman, Carlos Santana. And the right-hander deals. And now two and one. Here comes a pitch. Bounce to the left side. Throw over to Thomas. And that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. Good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for. Ball on the ground. Nice ground out. And to the plate for Kansas City, Nicky Lopez. The pitch. And that's in for a strike. Well, we call that keyholing. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Here's a one two. Next offering misses down and away. That's a really good take. Left hand hitter waits. And he grounds one to the right side. Two up, two down. The back. Number one left hand. At the play, number 11. Now this guy, a player that, if he gets on base, has the ability to really be aggressive getting around the base paths. The 2-2 two -two now. Now a high fly ball out to left center. Robert, has this one sized up? Makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. Nothing doing for the Royals. Score remains tied at three. We're back. It's the top of the ninth. And there's a new pitcher on the mound. Josh Stamont. Number 63. Back here in Kansas City. All set to start the ninth in this one. Here's the center fielder, Luis Robert. You know, this guy's great speed is in the back of that pitcher's mind. If he can get on, it's going to give him one more thing he's got to think about. Boog, I'm not sure how he took that right there. I mean, that was an incredible two-strike pitch. Here's the 2-2. The other way, and a base hit. So the go-ahead run is on base with a knock. You know, I was watching his rounds during batting practice today, so impressed with his ability to let the ball travel, go back up the middle and the other way. Sometimes when you step in the box during the game, you get a little anxious and you get away from that. But so far, I've seen him stay consistent with his pregame preparation. And now, Reese McGuire trying to move him over here. Santana and they tag him out the 
back in the shot. Tim Anderson. Now it's the shortstop, Tim Anderson. Well, first base open. Really no reason to pitch to this hitter right here. Put him on, have the force at second first, perhaps getting inning ending double play. Righty delivers. This one in the air, right field. Dozier settles underneath it, brings it in, and there's two down. And up next for Chicago, Minnie Minoso. It's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion, and he's in full speed. Next offering is fouled back. Two down, go ahead run in scoring position. You know, Boog, if you're that base runner at second base, you want to be quiet out there. Not bouncing around, not distracting your teammate, the hitter. Make sure that he can clearly focus on that pitcher and that release point. Kicks and fires. And ball four to a board. And the batter now, Frank Thomas. This guy with light tower power. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, Boog, not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at-bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. The pitch. And a foul ball. Robert, the lead runner out at second. Minoso on at first with two down. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. Third out. A lot of adrenaline. We can see it right there. And sometimes you just got to let it out. That's an outstanding job of taking that, executing, and getting out of a tough inning. So they turn to the lefty in this spot, Aaron Bummer. He has a great slider with tons of movement. And welcome back. So bottom of the ninth. Now here's the leadoff hitter for the Royals, Johnny Damon. Bomber deals. And so the lefty allows the leadoff free pass. Now it's Andrew Benintendi to hit. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Over to first, and he saved. And he deals. Just missed. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Liam Hendricks getting loose out there winning run on base at first no outs Bummer checks the runner and he dives back in safely swing and a miss and it's a full count now with two strikes may see some movement over there at first base try to stay out of a double play here to third might be two. Canerco to second. Over to Thomas. Two. A third baseman, number five. George Brett. Here's the third baseman, George Brett. All tied up here in the last half of inning number nine. On the ground, out to short. Sends it across the first. Brett out on the play. That's the third out. The new pitcher in the game, Jake Brents. Now pitching for the game. Number 59. Correct. 
back here at the ballpark. On to extra innings. Now it's the DH, Luis Aparicio. Line drive, caught. Throw not in time as he's able to get back to avoid the double play. Substitution now at second base. Here's the White Sox pinch runner, Leori Garcia. Harold Baines steps to the plate for the White Sox. Listen, there's absolutely no reason to pitch to this guy right here. You nibble, you see if he'll expand his zone, but don't give him anything to hit. If you walk him, not a big deal. You have a double play opportunity set up. Bullpen action for the Royals. Scott Barlow up and getting ready for Mike Matheny. Runner leads away at second. In the air, out towards left center. And an automatic double as it hops the fence. And a run comes in to score. He puts a great swing on that pitch and drives home the run. And that was always going to be a double, but the bounce over the wall just took the guesswork out of it right away. It was a nice swing. One out, runner at second. And next to him for the Sox, Ray Durham. The pitch. In the dirt, blocked. Tag safe. He's in the third of the wild pitch. Baines stands at third with one gone in the inning. Stays alive. In the infield at the corners, don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. Back to work, 3-2 now. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And a pitch. And that one is lifted in the air. Dozier on the move to his right. And puts the squeeze on that one. Runner tagging from third. Roll home not in time. The run scores. And they take a two-run lead. Two outs. Base is empty. Stepping in the long ball threat. Paul Canerco. He's already homered here in this one. And a payoff pitch. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Ninth pitch of the at bat due next. Cut on and miss. Struck him out. Out number three. Last chance to even things up. We head to the bottom of inning number 10. It's the White Sox five, Royals three. And Liam Hendricks will take over on the mound. Hard-throwing Australian. This is his first appearance of the season. Yasmani Grandal getting loose there. He's now in the game at first. We're in extras here, and now it'll be the cleanup spot for the Royals. Salvador Perez. Oh, look out here. He's going to come up ready to swing in this situation. Ball to strike. Swing and a miss. He was late. Strike two.
The tying run at the plate. And that's downed away. Bullpen activity starting up now. Jose Ruiz appears to be getting loose. Two two now. Stays alive. Two two now. Down to the dirt, swing and a miss. And it beats him for the first out after the drop third strike. Up next to the Warriors, the right fielder, Hunter. Now at the plate, Hunter Dozier. Next offering is in for a strike. And the pitch. And that skips in the dirt. One out and a runner at second. Here's a high fly ball out to center. Robert going back. Back some more. He makes the grab. And there's two down. The batter, number seven, designated hitter. Bobby Here's the Royals' designated hitter, Bobby Witt Jr. Just one out away, try to close it out. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Two outs and one in scoring position. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Well, this is a big win on the road and going extras into 10. Uh, so hard to pull those out, but I think this team did a great job of keeping the crowd out of the ball game late. When you can do that, it kind of calms everything down, keeps the adrenaline of the opposing team down a bit, and you can steal a win and get out of here happy. A 5-3 final score in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon. Our final line score this afternoon. First for the victorious White Sox. Five runs, ten hits, no errors. They left nine runners on base. For Kansas City, three runs on nine hits, no errors. They left 11 men on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and 43 minutes. Our paid attendance at Kauffman Stadium this afternoon 37,903. The Royals thank you for attending and remind you to buckle up and drive home safely.